Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Medford United Methodist Church. It's good to have you with us. My name is Joe Monahan. I want to welcome you on behalf of myself and also our associate pastor, Kathleen Stoles. It's good to see you this morning. I guess we can turn down. I turned the, we turned down up the sound system for the uh, Christmas Eve service, and I think we need to turn it back down. Um, I'll take care of that. <laughs> been here and also if you are visiting with us maybe for the first time today I hope that you'll take a minute too and uh, share with us your name and address information at the bottom we'd love to be able to let you know about things that are going on here at the church so we hope that you'll give us the opportunity to do that so uh, still a little bit maybe a little bit of a halo on it so it's good to see you and uh, I just want to share uh, one or two announcements um, I think the main one that I want to share is uh, coming up next Saturday there's an opportunity we went through the uh, Christmas season and we gathered gifts for the angel tree. And one of the organizations that we supported that we're partnered with is Wesley United Methodist Church in Trenton. And Wesley is an Hispanic congregation. And uh, so they're actually going to be distri distributing the gifts that we provided on Three Kings Day or around about Three Kings Day. And so that for them, that celebration is going to take place next Saturday, the 7th. And so you are welcome to come and be part of that gift distribution. And there's a sign-up sheet outside in the hallway. So if you'd like to be part of that, we'd love to have you and uh, just share your name and contact information. We'll get in touch with you and let you know about the details. I think those are all the announcements I've got to share. So let's begin. Good morning and Happy New Year. Good morning. I invite you to stand as you're able and join me in our call to worship. <clears throat> This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the year that the Lord has begun. We will rejoice and be glad in it. God's compassion never fails. God's mercies are new every year, every morning, every hour. Great is your faithfulness, O God. You bless those who hope in you and those who seek you. Great is your faithfulness, O God. be seated. I invite you to join me in our prayer of confession this morning. O oh God, you are Lord, slow Lord, to Lord, anger Lord. and swift to have mercy. Forgive, Forgive us when we treat time as a commodity or an enemy, when we abuse your gift of time. In our fastness and our slowness, help us to keep pace with you. 
Free us to live in your time, a new time, in which there is a time for everything under heaven, and slow is not too slow, and fast is not too fast. Transform us into people who see time as a gift and a friend, who live as if we have time, because we know that your time will never cease. Through Jesus we pray. Amen. Hear these words of assurance. See, Jesus says, I make all things new. All things includes me, and it includes you. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Let's take a moment to greet those around us with the peace of Christ. Pieces of peace in all kinds of time. And Perfect meter. Time pieces, huh? Will you also do the thing for me? Yeah. I was going to do it. Well, somebody has to sing it after you. Right. Yeah. You got it. Okay. I'm it's gonna, it's I'm your time. Children's side. I'll do the children's side. Oh, there's children's side. I'm not used to it. I might come down. That's fine. to invite our children to come forward now for our children's time. Come on, guys, gals, ladies, gentlemen, come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing, Brad? Happy New Year. Did you have a good Christmas? Yes. And how are you? Good. I'm happy to have you up here. Hello, ladies. I understand you're going to be singing, right? Yes. Well, good then you get to just be here and be with me, and then you get to celebrate music. So this is the first day of a new year, right? What year is it? 2017, right. You know, it's always fun to start a new calendar year. Um, so I got this calendar, and it says 2017 calendar, and it's always fun to think about there's so many things that might happen in that year. And this calendar is especially fun because it has all kinds of funny things on it. Like, did you know that April 5th is Caramel Day? And the following week, Wednesday, April 12th, is Licorice Day. So it's there's Dentist Day. <laughs> <laughs> After that is Dentist Day, yes. <laughs> and then there are days like Flag Day on June 14th. And there's all kinds, then there's the 4th of July we celebrate, right? There's all kinds of holidays. There's American flag, you're right. And so you ha each have a birthday coming sometime during this new year, right? And we just celebrated Easter. And if we go through the whole year, we're going to get to East. I mean, we just celebrated Christmas. We're going to get to Easter, and then we'll get to Thanksgiving again, and then we'll get to Christmas again. And the year will be gone like that. So... It's a whole bunch of days. It's 365 days. 365 days. That's a lot of days, isn't it? And some years we have how many? 366, right. Yeah, sometimes we have that extra one in leap year. So what is a day? How do you measure a day? How do you measure a day? 24 hours, right? And what happens in a day, Bradley? The sun comes up. The sun goes down. It gets dark, we go to sleep, and, oh. the moon comes out. and the moon comes out, and then we get up the next morning, and the sun comes up again, right? And then it comes over again. That's right. It just keeps it's happening. Pattern. That's right. It's a pattern. God created this amazing world with a sun that comes up and sets, and God created a world where we all have time to sleep and get renewed, and right now... We're in a, the winter time. Do you want to see the calendar? We're in the winter time when uh, actually a lot of the earth is sleeping, right? The plants are all sleeping. Some of the animals are sleeping. 
And what happens in the springtime? That's right, the animals come back out of hibernation and things start to grow again and the farmers plant things. And then after spring we have what season? Summer. summer. And what happens in the summertime? We can go, yeah, it gets warm so we can go swimming. And if the farmers have planted crops, they grow big and tall. And then in the fall, they harvest the crops so that we have lots of good things to eat. And also in the fall, what happens? Leaves change colors and they start to fall. So that's what happens. I mean, God planned this amazing world where all kinds of things happen. We put a calendar together and we put funny things in it like Carmel Day and Licorice Day. Uh, we might put Flag Day or the 4th of July. But God created a world. A dentist day. Oh, dentist day. <laughs> God created a world where everything just keeps repeating and we can always trust that even though new things happen in the new year, some things don't change. And God never changes because God is with us through each one of those seasons and through each one of those days, God never changes. We change, right? We grow up, we learn new things, we meet new friends, maybe we move to a new school or we go on a vacation to a new place, but God never changes. So we can give thanks for that. Just like the sun coming up every day and just like the seasons, those things never change and God never changes. So we celebrate that. All right, let's say a prayer before you go back to your seats. Loving God, we give you thanks for uh, the promise that you are always with us, the promise that is a new sunrise and a sunset every day, the promise that is all the seasons that just keep changing, just keep cycling around, and we know that you are always with us in the midst of any changes that happen in our lives. We can always trust you. Amen. Okay, thanks for coming up. I invite you now to join me in our scripture litany. Um, in your bulletin, I'm, I expect it will be on the screen. Lord, before... Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, forever you had formed the earth and the world. From everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn us back to dust and say, Turn back, you mortals. For a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it is past, or like a watch in the night. So teach us to count our days, that we may gain a wise heart.
while they headeth back, the scripture today is short, so I'll read it both in King James and regular. <laughs> for those of you who are pining for the old three kings thing. <laughs> so Isaiah 43, which we're echoing, 16 through 19. King James, thus saith the Lord, who maketh a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters. Translating for you young people. Thus says the Lord, who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters, who brings out chariot and horse, army and warrior. They lie down, they cannot rise. They are extinguished, quenched like a wick. Do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Amen. Will you pray with me? God, we thank you for this first day of a new year. We thank you for your work in our lives, the way that you continue to be at work uh, all around us and all through us. And Lord, we give you thanks for the people who surround us at this time of year, our families, our friends. And we thank you for just the opportunity to be together here in worship. We pray that you might speak a word to us through these words that I offer here. Lord, we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So the scripture that we read this morning has God saying, Behold, I am doing a new thing. So that's fitting for the first Sunday in a new year. And challenging for those of us who generally don't like to do new things which I think is most of us. So every year we make a commitment to change. We make a commitment to be different in some way or another. We look forward to a new year, a fresh start, while generally doing precisely the same things that we did last New Year's, right? So New Year's Eve maybe for many of us is a time when we might try something new when we're not necessarily as beholden to tradition. I think this is a time when we're willing to go someplace new or try something different. Even though I would observe, and did observe last night, that this is the fifth year that Dick Clark has not been hosting New Year's Eve show, and yet it still bears his name, right? Mm -hmm. But New Year's Day, New Year's Day is something different. New Year's Day is definitely a day for tradition. So I know that for some people that's the Mummers Parade, for some people that's watching the Rose Bowl Parade, maybe it's taking down the tree, uh, maybe it's eating certain foods, right? Sauerkraut, pork, beans, right? Those kinds of things. Now there's nothing necessarily wrong with traditions. That's not my point this morning. My point is that even on a day that's supposed to be about newness, we generally choose sameness, right? That's generally our choice. It's usually the way that we go. Is it any surprise then that most of our New Year's resolutions fail when that's our reality? Change is hard. And so for the last 50 years, we've been um, over and over again citing this statistic. It comes from a book that was written in 1960 with almost, that's really anecdotal. The idea that if you do something for 21 days, it becomes a habit. Okay, have you heard that before? 21 days establishes a habit? So reading the Bible, going to the gym, establishing a day, a time of day each day to pray, changing the way that you eat. You know, if you can stick with it three weeks, then you can stick with it forever. But more recent research suggests that the 21 day, 21 day idea is nowhere close to reality. Instead, it's something along the lines of 66 days, much, much longer, over two months, in fact. So there's this tension in our lives between needing routine. We crave routine from the time that we were kids. Have you ever tried to uh, babysit a kid who doesn't have a bedtime routine? <laughs> right? <clears throat> yeah, good luck. It's very, very difficult. So we crave routine from the time that we are kids. We're stuck between this tension, between that routine and this desire and this need, in fact, to do something new. 
And that same tension is at work in the church all the time. The church, when we worship Jesus, who was criticized during his time for being too far out there, and who actually preached about the idea of new wine requiring new wineskins. Do you remember that story that he told? The idea that, you know what, when new things happen, you need new containers to put them in. But we enshrine certain beliefs and behaviors and practices as being the way things have always been. When, in fact, if we look closely, many of the things that we say are, have always been from time immemorial really date back to maybe the 1950s, right? Or maybe they go back a little further to the late 1800s. Or maybe they go back a little bit further than that, maybe to John Wesley. But in reality, we can find a time and a place when they were not. So it's true that the scripture says in Hebrews 13:8, it's right at the top of the bulletin today, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. But that does not mean that the church must be. So you can't just take the church and substitute it where it says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever and say the church is the same yesterday and today and forever. We often hold God hostage to the notion or hold the church hostage to the notion that because God doesn't change, then the things that we do as a congregation shouldn't either. And yet any living being, and the church is a living being, that doesn't change in response to its environment, what happens to it? It dies. <laughs> That's okay. Usually I call somebody out. But that's great. You called yourself out, so that's fine. <laughs> Save me the trouble. So during the time of the writing of the portion of Isaiah that we read today, the Jewish people were in exile in Babylon. So this was the time after the Babylonians had come in. They'd conquered uh, Jerusalem. They had uh, conquered the land of Judah around Jerusalem. And they took some of the leaders many of the wealthy people, many of the nobles, people who had um, some leadership position in the, in the temple, they took them into exile. And they brought them to a place called Babylon about 50 miles south of what's modern uh, Baghdad, in between the Tigris and the Euphrates rivers. And they had already been there for some time when this was written. So generations had passed. Their parents and their grandparents had been taken. And they'd been praying for God to save them for maybe at this point 60 years. They remembered the stories about Moses. They remembered the crossing of the Red Sea and they talked about it and they thought about it and imagined that maybe God could do the same thing again to lead us through the waters, to lead us through the Tigris, to lead us through the Euphrates and lead us home. And yet God says to them somewhat surprisingly, Yes, I'm the one who made the way through the sea. But forget about that. Forget about that. Because I'm about to do something brand new. I'm not going to part the Euphrates. I'm going to make a way in the wilderness and a path in the desert. I'm about to do a new thing. And now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? Do you not see it? The thing that we value the most about God, the fact that God is eternal, that God is unchanging, that does not mean that God is incapable of doing something brand new, that God is incapable of surprising us. In fact, God seems to be saying here explicitly, do not expect the same old, same old. I parted the sea once already. I've been there and I've done that. And it's not my plan to do that again. I'm still ready to save you, but be prepared because the new thing is not going to be the thing that you expect. If you were God and you'd witnessed already billions and billions of sunrises on the earth, would you not be ready to do a new thing? Like step into human form. Like call shepherds. Those who had been left out of the story before and called them to come and see. 
or to put a star in the sky, to call those who had never known this God to come and see. Wouldn't you want to do a new thing? So we can't hold God hostage to this notion that God is the God of sameness because it's just not true. God's character does not change. God loves us. God forgives us. God saves us. But God also reserves the right to judge us and to correct us and to redirect us. God reserves the right to surprise us. Otherwise, our God is no longer a living God, and the scripture calls God the living God. If we allow God in our minds to only be the same old, same old, then what that means is now we have a God who exists only in the stories that we tell to our children, the stories that our ancestors told to us. But God isn't real in our everyday experience and the things that we go through. So our God is constant, but our God is never stagnant. Our God is consistent, but our God is never boring. Our God is reliable, but our God is never in a rut. And in the end, aren't those things the things that we aspire to be as well? People whom others can count on. People who are true to who we are and yet all the while growing, all the while stretching, all the while improving to become our best selves, the people that God truly created us to be. So don't be afraid to make a resolution. Don't be afraid to make a change. And trust God to surprise you sometime in 2017, to surprise you, to be with you in ways that you did not expect, to challenge you in ways that you did not anticipate. And you don't have to worry, because it is our same old God just doing a brand new thing. Amen? Amen.
You may be seated. And we'd like to invite those who are going to be uh, taking part in the mission trip to come forward and to be commissioned. The adults who are gathered here and a couple more who are not able to be with us this morning uh, to travel to White Sulphur Springs in West Virginia uh, starting tomorrow morning to spend the week uh, rebuilding a home that was uh, devastated by the flooding that took place there last year. So let's take some time now and we can say a blessing over our team and uh, pray for their safety and also for their work. Let's pray together. Dear friends, Today we recognize the ministry of our adult mission team and commission them to a special task in the service of Jesus Christ. For John, for Robert, Al, Brad, Heidi, and Kathleen, in the name of this congregation, I commission you to this work and pledge to you our prayers, our encouragement, and our support. May the Holy Spirit guide and strengthen you, that in this and all things, you may do God's will in the service of Jesus Christ. Almighty God, look with favor upon this team who today affirm their commitment to follow Christ and to serve in his name. Give each of them courage, patience, and vision, and strengthen us all in our Christian vocation of witness to the world and of service to others through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Really grateful, and uh, today Robert's not able to be uh, with us this morning. Uh, but we have, I think, everybody else, right? And uh, we, we're very sorry on the loss of your grandmother, and so Margo won't be making the trip. But um, as I look at these folks, these, this is an extraordinarily talented group of people, um, so I'm sure that they are going to accomplish a whole lot in this, uh, in this week. So uh, yeah. <laughs> I think that this is going to be a wonderful thing. So God bless you all, and thank you so much for going forth to serve. In this way. Thanks. Thanks. So as we get ready to receive our offering, um, let me just give you an update. So as we had, uh, as we closed out last year, we had a challenge in place um, for some matching money, and I'm happy to report that we received all that matching money because uh, the offerings actually over the last couple weeks of 2016 really were amazing. And actually last year. Uh, when I think everything is said and done, it's going to be uh, a year that we're going to look back on as really record-breaking in the history of this church um, because we brought in over a million dollars last year between everything. So it really was a tremendous and amazing thing. I, uh, Donna was doing a little looking back over the past few years, and, and there's nothing really that comes close to it. Um, now, as we get ready to uh, move into 2016, some of those gifts that we received were some designated gifts at the very end. So we're still a little bit short to cover our uh, shared ministry, which is the amount of money that we contribute back to the United Methodist Church in New Jersey and uh, throughout the world. I think we're about $9,500 short. And so uh, over the next couple of weeks, we'll be working to bring that in so that uh, we can pay all of those things uh, by January 14th, I think is the deadline, in order for us to uh, get credit for having paid 100%. So we're looking forward to that. I'm really excited. I just, I honestly cannot believe uh, from where we were a few weeks ago and uh, where we are now. It's unbelievable. So I thank you so much for your generosity. It's been an amazing, amazing year. And uh, there are lots of stories to be told about that. But I'm really grateful to all of you. And again, if you're visiting with us maybe today for the first time, you know, it's, it's not about the money, even though I'm talking about it right now. Really just happy to have you here. And I look forward to welcoming you again. You are a guest. You don't need to feel obligated to put anything in the plate. But I just want to celebrate uh, what this congregation has done, and I'm really incredibly grateful to all of you. And thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's worship God with our gifts, our tithes, and our offerings.
pray with me? The shapes and faces of ministries change, but the hope we proclaim is constant. Lord Jesus, we pray for you to come, come and yet we know that you are always here. Help us to be faithful to your work in this time and in this place. Help us to speak your word of grace, love, and forgiveness in our generation. Amen. You may be seated. Let, no, let's keep going. We're going to pray from that. We'll pray from the table. So as we get ready to uh, celebrate communion here, I want to uh, just remind you that this table does not belong to the United Methodist Church, but it belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ. And he's the one who issues the invitation. That invitation is to all people who seek to live in a new relationship with God and with their neighbor through him. So all of you are welcome here. So as we receive today, we'll receive by intinction, which means that you'll be given a piece of bread to dip in the cup. We'll invite you to come forward uh, by the center aisle and then return by the side aisles. And as you're coming forward, I'll encourage you to be in prayer for that person who's uh, in the line in front of you so that each person can be prayed over individually this morning. And um, as, uh, as you are, are receiving this morning, also, if there's some reason you can't come forward, please let us know. Make sure uh, that the ushers know. We'll make sure to bring uh, the elements to you. We also have gluten-free communion available, and that will be uh, on the right-hand side. If that's something that you need, please just ask. So let's continue with the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right, and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And because you are so good, we offer to you this morning our joys and our celebrations. Are there joys to be shared? Amen. 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 A new year. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and we join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of is your son Jesus Christ we trust that when we come together and gather in his name we lift our prayers to you that you hear us and so we come to the table this morning with many concerns on our hearts and some of the concerns that were shared uh, today are for Bob who just wants some prayers for a, a good 2017 and we pray for Douglas uh, Karen's cousin who is out of a coma but continues to need prayers of healing we praise, pray for uh, Judy Howard family and um, for the Pellegrino family and all the extended family on the passing of, of Judy's mom. Are there other concerns? Janet Anderson. Janet. Amen. 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 
Finally, Lord, we thank you for your son and for all his coming means for our lives and for the world. By the baptism of Jesus' suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church and you delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and you made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread. He gave thanks to you. Then he broke the bread and he shared it with his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then when the supper was over, Jesus likewise took the cup. He gave thanks to you. He shared it with his disciples and he said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. Now pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory. And we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever.
So as we uh, prepare to conclude the service, I have a prayer here that I found that I thought was wonderful and just an opportunity to bless our time. So we've been talking a lot about time, about doing new things, about how God um, is not constrained by our time, but instead is, is able to do new things whenever and wherever God chooses. So I thought it might be a good thing for us to kind of consecrate our time in the coming year to God. And so the way that I invite you to do that is, how many of you use a calendar on your phone or something like that? If you use that, get that out. If you have a watch, you can get that out. Whatever you use is your timepiece. You know, that uh, maybe it's a Fitbit. I don't know what it is. But if you have something like that with you, I just invite you to get it out. You know, even open up that calendar app. Um, just to prepare yourself for the day. If you carry something around, you can get that out of your pocket or out of your purse. And let's take a moment here and uh, let's pray a blessing upon our time in, in 2017. Lord, you who live outside of time and reside in the imperishable moment, we ask your blessing on this New Year's Day upon your gift of time. We ask you to bless our clocks and our watches, you who kindly direct us to observe the passing of minutes and hours. May they make us aware of the miracle of each second of life we experience. May these, our ticking servants, help us not to miss that thing which is important, while you keep us from falling into a machine-like routine. Free us from lives as clock watchers, and instead help us to become those who journey through time with you. Bless our calendars, these ordered lists of days and weeks, of months, of holidays, of holy days, of fasts and feasts, all of our special days of remembering. May these servants, our calendars, once reserved for the royal few, for magi and priests, now grace our homes and our lives. May they remind us of birthdays and other gift days as they teach us the secret that all life is meant for celebration and contemplation. Bless, Lord, this new year with each of its 365 days and nights. Bless us with new moons and full moons. Bless us with happy seasons and a long life. Grant to us, Lord, the New Year's gift of a year of love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. stand as you're able.
technical difficulties are always a possibility. Um, I considered recording my sermon in advance and lip-syncing it, but after watching Mariah Carey last night, I said I better not take that risk. <laughs> All right. So as you go forth, go forth to be different in the name of a God who is always the same and yet is always doing a new thing. Go forth in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.